Liz. How are you today? I'm fine. Just like I said, Wally Reed from the Botanic Garden is here, and he's going to show us something very interesting about bromeliads. So what have you got here, Wally? Well, what we're going to do today, Liz, is mount a tillandsia on a piece of bark. Uh, these tillandsias are, are epiphytic orchids, or I'm sorry, epiphytic bromeliads from the rainforest, uh, and they normally attach themselves to a, a tree bark or branch or stem. Right, now, uh, what is an epiphyte? An epiphyte is an, a plant that uh, grows upon another plant for support, uh, but does not uh, take minerals and nutrients from that plant. Now, the epiphytes compete for light and air, uh, but they don't uh, actually uh, uh, enter the vascular system of the other plant. Right, and bromeliads are definitely an epiphyte. Yes, they are. <laughs> uh, there, are some, there are some terrestrial bromeliads, mm -hmm. uh, and those would live on the ground floor or the ground of the rainforest, uh, but the tillandsias here are, are epiphytic and would definitely live uh, up in the canopy. Okay. Uh, so, so what the first step, actually, I've already started, is to, uh, I've chosen a piece of cork bark today just because that's a little bit more uh, of a natural setting for this tillandsia. That's true. This is just like it is growing on trees, as though it would in the rainforest. Absolutely. Uh, what I've done is I've attached some uh, sphagnum moss to the bark with some uh, nylon uh, fish line, uh, basically. Uh, the reason we use fish line, it's strong, it's invisible, uh, and once the plant attaches itself with its anchoring roots to the bark, you can cut the uh, string and never even know that it's there. Uh, so like I said, the first step is, is actually choosing your bark, and I'm, I'm going to mount this uh, sort of on an angle, just uh, to give it a little asymmetrical look. Okay. And I've already attached the, uh, the sphagnum moss to the bark, and I am going to need a little assistance here, Liz. Sure, so, I'd be uh, glad to help you uh, out. Usually on these small ones, it's just a matter of removing the, uh, the plant from the, the small pot. Uh, and, and picking a spot, and I've sort of located at the bottom portion of this. Uh, and what you do is just lay that uh, tillandsia, let me turn it around a little bit so it, it grows away. What I don't want it to do is actually grow into the bark. What I want it to do is begin to grow away from the bark. Okay, that'll be pretty. So uh, what we'll do is we, uh, we start with mounting it uh, on the sphagnum moss. Uh, now what I want to do is cover this uh, this uh, medium here uh, with the moss and actually this epiphyte uh, we won't have to water uh, in the traditional watering way. I'll show you at the end or tell you at the okay. end uh, how, how we're going to water this. Uh, so what you want to do is, is cover that uh, medium uh, with, a, with a handful of, of moss and neatness really doesn't count here. It's more important to, uh, to get the, uh, the, the root ball of that plant covered. Uh, if you would, why don't you uh, sort of hold this up and also sure. hold your, your hand there. Uh, right on the, the root Right, ball. I've got, got the uh, moss around the root ball. And like I said, I've already started the nylon line. And what I'm just going to do here now is make a couple more passes uh, over the root ball with this nylon fishing line, keeping it taut. And like I said, that's another reason we, uh, we use this uh, is because it... Uh, it's very strong, and you can you can get a little uh, little extra pull on it just to hold that uh, hold that plant onto the bark. It already feels pretty sturdy yeah, on there, but we want to make sure it's not going to fall off right. when we have it hung up. That's right, uh, and and this is one of those plants that uh, is. Uh, traditionally not grown in a pot. Uh, this is actually uh, a wall hanging, uh, for lack of a, a better term. Uh, <laughs> now all the ones I showed today were in pots and it's fine for them to live in there. Oh. However, this is closer to their natural environment. Right, and remember, like I said, there are some uh, bromeliads that, that are terrestrial that would normally grow in pots or in the ground. Uh, this particular one uh, will spend most of its time attached to a, a tree somewhere or, or a branch or something like that. Uh, after you've made a, a couple of passes on this, uh, just go ahead and uh, tie it off. Okay. Next time, I think I'm going to use a little, uh, a little bigger string. My, uh, my little, my fingers here. Uh, <laughs> well, that's uh, fine as long as it works. Yeah, yeah, so this will be fine. Yeah, this is a good arts and crafts project too. If you enjoy doing that, you can combine your love of plants and your arts and crafts. Absolutely. Okay, after you've got it tied off, uh, what you can do is uh, go ahead and, and water that plant, and it's it's firmly attached. Uh, what I like to do sometimes is add a little hook or a nail in the back here, and you can hang it on the wall. Uh, it's always important to mist these plants, and this is how they actually would collect their rain uh, in the rainforest. If you notice, the water is uh, channeling down into the crown of that plant as I water it over the top. That's right. They do like to collect water in the cup. 
right? And Tillandsias don't exactly have the same cup as a bromeliad, but, but the water does channel down in there. And once you get it nice and moist, uh, you can just kind of let it drain a little bit. Uh, and uh, oh, well, when, when it, uh, it, it came out pretty good. Go ahead, there what do you we think? Go. Oh, it's lovely. That's why you can hang it on your wall. And then you can even put it in the tub. Well, that's right? that's what I find the easiest way to water these is it's a little difficult in your living room to uh, use a spritzer bottle. Uh, so if you hang it on the wall, you can take it once a week or so, uh, take it in the shower, go ahead and douse it good, let it drain, and then hang it right back up again. And it's uh, actually living art on your wall. <laughs> and I see you have another Talanzia here. Well, I brought this one along uh, just to, just to kind of show you. This one. Uh, is, is another Tillandsia. Its common name here is Spanish moss. Uh, this is uh, what I call the ultimate epiphytic plant. Uh, it absorbs all its nutrients and moisture right through its uh, outer layers. Uh, and a lot of times what I'll do is after I mount this, I'll just add a little Spanish moss, uh, not, number one, to cover my, uh, my string so you can't see it. And the silver color is just uh, really a nice accent, uh, oh, especially really against the silver bark and also uh, against the Spanish moss as well as the, uh, the purple flower. Uh, this is our finished yeah. product here. Uh, this plant would probably live on here for three or four years before you would have to ever do it again. Uh, and uh, to do it again, all I always do is just add a little bit more moss to the outside, add a little bit more string, mount it on a bigger piece of bark, and you really can uh, grow these plants uh, to, a, to a large size. Well, that is really lovely, and I'm sure some of our viewers are going to want to try this themselves. Well, this is a good, like you said, good arts and craft project, good project for a rainy day uh, if, if you don't have uh, much to do. Uh, and in the Washington, D.C. area here, uh, these make great plants that can live outside from May to October. That's true. That's true. You can enjoy them on your porch as long as they don't get too much direct sun no, outside. The, right. Uh, the other thing, uh, this plant is relatively insect free. Uh, it occasionally will get scale, but uh, scale you can usually wash off with, uh, with high pressure water uh, and, and uh, have no problems with insects at all. Well, that's great. Well, thanks a lot for showing us that, Wally. Well, I've got to get going because I see the letter carrier is coming. So thanks again. Okay, Liz, I'll see you.